So this is when we take a moment to bless our children, you know, from birth to 25. And we know that those in that 25 to 30 bracket need our prayers as much as those that are just born because they're trying to figure life out and life is challenging. It's challenging for young people because jobs are scarce, uh, they're scared of these viruses and everything that's going on around them, and then there's a violent element that you don't want them to be pulled into. So they need our prayers. So even though our young children aren't here today, we're still going to ask God's blessings over them and their challenges they're all faced with. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to be in Luke 6, verse 40, and we're going to amplify this in the sermon as well. But this is what I want our young children to take away. Students, and in some translations it says disciples, are not greater than their teacher. And who is their teacher? Boy, did they have a teacher. But the student, disciple who is fully trained, will become like the teacher. Amen. And that's what we strive for. So before I get in front of myself with the sermon, let's go ahead and pray for our youth. Oh, Jesus, you love our youth, and you are their teacher. Jesus, I cry out to you that our young people will understand that they are loved, that they will feel the power of the teacher, the knowledge and wisdom you will bestow on their parents as they guide them through this journey of life. Lord, we are all responsible for our young people. Help us to recognize that. Help us, Lord, not to judge or criticize and to do no additional harm, but to show them love and understand the grace you have for them and for all of us. We ask this blessing on our true youth in our city, in our nation, and in our world. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking that moment with me to pray for our youth. You know, the name of our sermon today is Do Not Judge Others. And we're going to be in Luke 6, verses 38 through 42. But before we get into the scripture, let's talk a little bit about how this, how this sermon developed. You know, every week, I try really hard to let the Spirit guide me. And this was a really, really tough week for me. And so I want to share it with you. And as I was praying about it, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd be praying because my heart was so heavy. And it was heavy with anger. And I didn't like that feeling. It was heavy with rage of what was going on in our nation. And I didn't like that feeling. I thought, Lord, I don't want to feel like this. How do I stand before you and my, your children and teach something I'm not feeling? Love is important. And as a teacher and a leader, it's important that the, I own the message that I believe when I stand before you who Jesus is. And as I looked at what was going on and how these, these, how my Asian brothers and sisters, brother and sisters, had been massacred, my heart just bled and I was outraged. And I prayed because I knew Jesus didn't want that rage in my heart. Because when we allow rage in our hearts, we can't stand and show the light of Jesus. We're a light of the world and the salt of the earth. If we believe that, we have to own it. But we're human. We're human, and that pain is real, and it's genuine. And what comes with pain? 
condemnation and rage. So it's interesting. I was watching the news, and one of the senators from Texas said that in Texas they have longer rope in higher trees. And what they do to evil people, they know how to take care of evil people. And that made me even matter because I thought, you've been lynching young black and brown children for years. How dare you say that? But this is what the Spirit does. That's how I felt. But I want you to hang on to how the Spirit dealt with that. I was sharing with my sister what he had said, and she said, that's a song. I said, what do you mean that's a song? She says, yeah, Lonnie Jr. and I and Mom, he learned the song, and it's a country western song. My brother loved, my mother loved that song. Why did she love that song? Because coming from Texas, That's how they would sing about what they were going to do to people that were unjust and evil and hurt others. And all of a sudden, I saw that senator in a different light. All of a sudden, I thought, how dare me judge him from my own perspective? Is it true that young black children have been lynched? Is it true that that was what was done to to African Americans across the South? And even in the North, sure, that's true. But the, the, the context in which the, in which the senator meant the message was all so true. And that's why I share it with you. Let's not be so quick to judge others, to condemn others. We don't know the full heart of the story. And this is what, what we learn in Luke 6. The whole chapter, like always, I encourage you, read the chapter. Don't just take my word for it. Some of this may feel like it's out of context. Read it all so you see what the teaching is, and why the teaching is there. Because the very next part of the chapter talks about good and bad fruit. An apple is an apple. It'll never be an orange, right? And a rotten apple is a rotten apple, and it won't restore itself to health. So what does that mean? That means we have to take responsibility and accountability for how we condemn and view others. One of the hardest things for me is when and, and don't think I'm saying I'm good, because I'm not. I just shared with you a very personal story to show you we all have to own what's in our hearts. We have to allow the Spirit to change our hearts. Change our hearts. Everybody deserves to be treated like a, a, a human being. Jesus gave us that. Everybody deserves to be treated with respect. Jesus gave them that. How dare us condemn them? How dare us judge someone? Because when we drive down the freeway, they're homeless. How dare us say, oh, they're all drug addicts? We don't know that person's story. And we can't pretend that we do. And we can't allow what other sound bites tell us to evaluate another human being. That's what I was doing to that senator. I was evaluating him from my own stuff. And then you know what happens when we condemn people? They usually dig in. You know why? because they don't understand your perceptive either. They don't understand that I, I may be coming from, oh my goodness, I've, I've heard about my brothers and sisters being lynched and murdered. How dare you reference that? He wasn't referencing that. He was referencing a song and a culture. My mother was from Texas. 
That's why these songs about Texas and how they brought out their justice rang true in her spirit. And she loved that song. She'd dance and sing it. Now, some may say, oh, that's not a good song. Who are we to judge the song? It spoke to her spirit. Does that make her wrong? No. No. Judging one another is wrong, my brothers and sisters. And we will never come to the realization of what that is unless we search our own hearts. You will see some people will wear this mask and some will not. How dare us judge the ones who will not? We don't know their full story. We don't know if they were raised in a culture that didn't trust medicine, didn't trust doctors. How are people going to see who Jesus was if we that know who Jesus is does not allow our spirit and our hearts to be changed? We don't have this on our own. Our hearts will only be changed when we allow the spirit in to change it. This is a time of reflection. This is a month for us to reflect on who Jesus is and what did Jesus' love look like. Now this is a time for us to own it, to accept it. Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to save it and he's alive. And if we allow our hearts to be changed, we will change. And we will see the plights of our brothers and sisters. There's a lot going on in our world. How are we going to respond to it? Are we going to ask for Jesus' love to fill our hearts so we can respond out of love? Are we going to let the fruits of evil define us, sink into our spirits, Show has to absorb us to start in our condemnation. How dare them? That's not what Jesus tells us to do. So let's go to the scripture and see what we're told to do. Let's think about this. Keep in mind what the title of our sermon is. Do not judge others. We're going to start in verse 37 of Luke 6. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Think about that. Do we want to be judged? Do we want something that we've said or done taken out of context? Do we want someone to forgive something when we misstep? Do we forgive when someone's misstepped, or do we hang on? Because trust and believe, our current news feeds, what's in our heads, wants us to hang on. Wants us to come from a a place of condemnation. Trust and believe, none of us want our sins on blast. And we all have them. Right? We have them. Every single human being. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you. Do we believe that? Or do we think we get a pass? Do we think that we can condemn our brothers and our sisters and we all get a pass on that? We don't, my brothers and sisters. It's kind of like I was telling you. It was starting to eat at my heart, eat at my spirit. I was starting to feel angrier and angrier and angrier. And when I let go of that anger, when I realized I had judged someone incorrectly, the spirit pricked me and I suddenly felt better. I felt like 
Thank you for revealing that, Lord. And I had prayed that God would change my heart. Help me to see what is going on. Why do I feel this way? And it wasn't much longer that it was revealed because that's who Jesus is. That's the love he has for each and every one of us. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. Boy, forgiveness is not easy because we don't have the power for true forgiveness. But if we ask for it, Jesus will give it to us. True forgiveness comes only from Jesus who's alive and with us and gives us that. True forgiveness. When we get into trouble is when we think we can do it on our own and we can't. We can't. Because if we could, Jesus would not have had to come and reconcile us back to the Father. You know, when I was probably in high school, I decided I was going to read the Bible from cover to cover. I didn't get too far. I probably got through about a third of it. And it wasn't because I didn't want to read it and it, I was bored or tired. It was the violence of the people in the Bible, in the, New Test, in the Old Testament. It was the, the anger that you saw. You saw, I saw our humanness in its rawest form. Don't get it wrong, brothers and sisters. There is evil among us. Don't think for one second that there's not. The point is, do we succumb to it? Or do we realize we are not the ones to judge one another? Jesus will. He has the authority to judge it. How's he judging us? What are our deeds like? Do we justify condemnation of each other? Do we justify disrespecting one another? Do we think that person's not worthy of our respect? Is that what Jesus says? No. No, it's not. Everybody is worthy. Jesus gave them that. And you will be able to embrace that and show it if you don't allow condemnation to be in your heart. Now, as Bob was praying over the offering today, he highlighted this. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Have you experienced that? I have. You have, haven't you? Yes, yes, in full. You know, this next part is, is very in t enlightening and telling. Press down. Shake it together. Push it down, right? Push it down. Shake it together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. Can you imagine that you give so much that it's, it's pushed down, it's running over. Do you know the love of Jesus you will feel when you embrace that level of giving? When we hold back, we hold back on the things and the blessings. You know, Jesus said it came so that we would have life more abundantly. What does that abundance mean? It's, it's abundant to take a moment and listen to each other. It's a blessing to take a moment to see if you have something you can give. You know, right now we have people pouring over our borders, holding little children. And what do you think they want? They see an abundance and they would like some of that. They would like to be able to have their children have that. Do we judge them? 
Do we, are we afraid to share what isn't even ours? It was given to us with the understanding we look for the opportunity to share it, not to hold on to it. When our hands are held tight, there's no room for anything to come into it because it's a fist. And when you open your hands, things come in and they go out. They come in and they go out. Right? This is what this is talking about. Don't be afraid that you're going to lose what you perceive is yours. Right? Don't be afraid that you're going to lose something. You didn't have it in the first place. It's all a gift that was given to you to share with others. And when we open up our hearts to who Jesus is, we don't have to worry about when we're going to share it or how. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Now, keep in mind, my brother and sisters, we don't do this to get something back. You're not checking boxes. Oh, did that. Okay, my barometer just went up. Where's the rest that's coming in my cup? That's not why we do it. That's not the right attitude. We do it so the love of Jesus shines through, and people want to know, why are you so happy? How are you making it in all of this that's going on around us? And don't think that what's going on around us isn't real. But we're not going to participate in that. Jesus wants us to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. To look for opportunities to take care of each other. And we do see that. We see it across our nation. We see it with those who are feeding one another. We see it as restaurants opened up. We saw there was a furniture store in Houston that had power when there was no power. They opened up their store to their neighbors. Come in. That's showing who Jesus is. That's allowing our hearts to be changed. That's helping us take care of each other. Verse 39, then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another? Can you just imagine that? What's that saying is how are we going to lead anyone if we allow our eyes to be shielded and our blindness and to be there and our anger and our rage to be replace our love when we allow ourselves to judge each other that's the blind leading the blind isn't it so what does jesus say about that won't they both fall into a pit won't they both fall into the ditch yes you're not going to want evil to lead you you're going to want the love of Christ to lead you. You're going to want your heart to be humbled. You're going to want forgiveness to be written there and not for the people that you agree with. Amen? Not for the people that agree with you. What good is that? It only comes out when we're there for the people that we're having difficulty with when we have to calm our spirits and listen to each other. Verse 40, this is what we read in our blessing for the youth. Students, like I said, in some translations, it's apostles, are not greater than their teacher. None of us are greater than Jesus. Jesus was our and is our teacher not was, is our teacher. But the student, apostle, who is fully trained will become like the teacher. Fully trained. 
will come like the teacher. We will become like Jesus in this regard. Our hearts are going to be open to change. If for love, true love, kindness, patience, understanding. Judgment is not ours. It's not our place to judge. Verse 41. And why worry about a speck in your friends, or in some translations, brother's eye, or neighbors. The New Revised Standard Version says, in your neighbor's eye, when you have a log in your own. Metaphorically, doesn't it really tell the story? It really does. So many of us are worried about what others are doing. Let's focus on our own stuff. Let's focus on our own sins that we need to change. Let's focus on what we need to do to be a light to the world. Let's focus on that. And I think that's a great analogy. You're worried about the speck in your neighbor's eye when you got this big plank log hanging out of your own? You're not even going to see the speck in your neighbor's eye when you focus on the things we need to change. Let's go on. Verse 42. How can we think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? How can we say that? Don't we see that across our world and across our nation? Let me, let me get that out of your eye. Don't you get it as we judge one another on our choices that we make? This one's right and this one's wrong. We, that's not our business. What are we doing? How are we showing equality, dignity, and respect for everyone we meet? How are we doing that? I think a lot of the things we think are big issues will start dissolving. They'll start going away. We'll start seeing unity and harmony in our nation. When you can't see past the log in your own eye, We can't see past our own problems. How are we going to start judging and identifying someone else's problems? Let's go on to verse 42. What does Jesus say? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your brother's or neighbor's or friend's eye. Either way, it's telling us, look at your own stuff. We got a lot of changing to do. We got a lot of love to show. We got a lot of work to do before we allow the sound bites of hate, judgment, condemnation to float around in our heads. This log analogy really brings the picture home. It really does. So as we walk through our journey this week, think about it. Think about it. When you're listening to whatever is your favorite network to listen to, let the litmus test of Jesus be how you evaluate that. Does that sound like the love of Christ? Wow, I may not want that to seep into my soul to seep into my heart. That doesn't sound right. Don't just embrace it. Oh, it's the law. It's the only way. Oh my goodness, look at all of this. Evil is out there, my friends. I'm not trying to say it's not. But the only thing that we really can come to terms with, let Jesus change our hearts. 
Let ourselves be led by the Spirit, not by outrage and hate and condemnation. Let us get, take the log out of our own eyes so we can see clearly our brother and our sisters. And we will. We will. Because what we ask for, the Lord gives us. When it's our attitude that we want to change, we'll see it changing. It might be a little painful. It might be interesting what gets revealed to us that we might want to work on. We may not want to have those words of a blanket crot statement when we see a homeless person, right? When we see someone who's dirty, when we see someone who's hungry, we might not want to judge them because we don't know how they got there. We have no idea. Did some of them succumb to drugs? Sure. But is that our place to judge that? No. No. It's not. And I'll guarantee you, when we see, show love, we will see love. We really will. So what do we want to walk away with today? What are our takeaways? Well, if we don't learn anything else, do not condemn others. Let's get the log out of our own eye so we can see clearly the speck that's in our brothers' and sisters' eyes. Let's show, let the love of Jesus shine through us so people want to know him. There's nothing more sad then when people come to our churches they come to our homes looking for love and they get the opposite of that you can sit here but don't sit here you're not good enough to be in my home you're not good enough to take a shower here and I wish I was kidding but I've heard that and it happened and yes, I was appalled. I was appalled at the names and the venomness that I saw coming out of the person's mouth who did it. But then, why am I judging them, right? Why am I judging them? What can I say that might turn that heart to not be quite so hard? Might want to ask Jesus, right? What can we say to change the hearts of those that are feeling like that? Because if you can change that heart of that person who's saying, you can't come here, you can't shower here, you might make me sick. If you can change the heart of that person, the person they're attacking is not going to be feeling attacked. So now, like a domino, everything's shifting. Isn't that something? Don't you want to be a part of that? Don't worry about the speck in your friend's eye or your brother's eye or your neighbor's eye. You know, it's one of the things I love about uh, Bible Gateway, which is a Bible app, is I can change the translations and read all the different versions that are telling you the Greek for this word or the Latin for this word, or in ancient translations, it says this, dive into your Bible, understand it, because the words bring to life for us. You know, someone was saying that they wished they could have walked where Jesus walked. They wished they could have had that three and a half years to sit there as a disciple and an apostle and be taught by Jesus. But you know what, my brothers and sisters? We are taught by Jesus. Because the Jesus that died on that cross for each and every one of us is alive. Alive, amen? And walking with us today. Embrace it. Know it. Take this season to hold on to that. 
Get rid of the log in your own eye. Well, we've kind of really t spoke on that one. So I think you got it. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. Remember what I said about that changed heart and how good you feel? I think when you forgive others, you feel the forgiveness because it opens your heart, your mind, and your spirit to the spirit of Jesus. I can't wait until we, our world, we see our world changing and we as Christians are walking and in impacting that. We get to change our world through allowing the Spirit to change our hearts. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I love you all so much. This is an opportunity for us to grow in Jesus' love. It's a time for us to shine the love of Christ. It's a time for us to be the salt to this earth. And how are we going to do that? By letting the love of Jesus shine through each and every one of us. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you so much for revealing to us who Jesus is, for helping us to understand that Jesus came to save the world to not condemn us, Lord. Help us not to condemn each other. Help us not to judge each other, Lord, but to allow the light of Jesus to shine through us. Help us to show love, respect, everyone, Lord. You gave them that. Help us, Lord, to show them the love of Jesus. Help us to change our hearts, to allow the Spirit to change us. And thank you so much for the journey that we're on with Jesus as we walk through our time in on this earth and in this life. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.